with every Magic the Gathering release, we get all the rave reviews of all these busted rares and things like that that can break the format or just make these decks really cool. But I want to talk today instead about the unsung heroes, those glue cards of every format, the commons and uncommons, specifically from Duskmorn. These are going to be my favorite cards that have come from Duskmorn that are not a rare or a mythic. So let's take a look at that list now in no particular order. Let's start us off with a great way to shut down a multitude of very annoying and problematic creatures for a low, low cost of one mana, and that is unable to scream for a blue is an enchantment or an enchant creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a toy artifact creature with base power and toughness of zero two in addition to its other types. And as long as the enchanted creature is face down, it cannot be turned face up. For context, I have been playing this in standard as part of my sideboard in best of three arena, as well as main deck in best of one matches, and it has been really good whenever I've used it. Blue usually doesn't get a lot of one mana answers to a creature without some massive drawbacks, such as with Pongify, leaving the opponent with a 3-3 creature behind. I had this discussion with someone not that long ago that I would for sure play Pongify in standard right now if it were there. And Unable to Scream in many ways is a better version of Pongify because either way you're going to leave behind a creature, but in this case it's a 0-2 that does nothing and can even affect indestructible creatures unlike a Pongify. I've personally turned a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, Shielder the Apocalypse, and a Slick Shot show off into paperweights with this thing, and it feels incredible. And the icing on the cake here is with so many enchantment interactions in Duskmorn, Unable to Scream can trigger all of them, giving you more eerie triggers, as well as shutting down your opponent's threats. And in Brawl and Commander, it's just a great way to cheaply pin down an opposing commander that might be causing you issues as well, as well as the other big threats that have to be dealt with. Now, in that same vein, we have another aura that I've been working with in Sheltered by Ghosts. For one and a white, it's an enchantment aura, enchant creature you control. When this enters, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus zero, lifelink, and ward two. Standard already has a similar enchantment in Ossification, but it's limited to only being able to exile creatures and planeswalkers, and you can only target basic lands with it. Sheltered by Ghosts for the same cost can hit any non-land permanent, but the risk here, of course, is having it to enchant a creature. But they had it Grand Ward 2, protecting whatever you put this on for at least a turn most of the time. And that lifelink is nothing to sneeze at, especially when Mono Red is so prevalent in the standard format right now. Generally, a well-timed Sheltered by Ghosts can actually break a Mono Red deck by getting rid of a Heartfire Hero that started to get built up or to take out a slick shot show off that didn't manage to kill you when they were trying to you know, juice it up. Then they really can't afford to burn the creature away because the shelter by ghosts is on it. And it's a life linker that can swing the game back to you against the red menace. For Commander and Brawl, this is a great addition to a Mazzy deck. It's an aura. It just keeps bringing it back with her abilities, as well as something like Calyx or Yenna to copy it and take down additional targets. And remember the Ward 2 on this stack. So if you copy a Sheltered by Ghost and put the copy on the same creature, it gains an additional instance of Ward 2 that the opponent will have to pay for to try to get rid of that creature. And as a Commander exclusive legend that I want to try this with, three dog galaxy news dj from the fallout set you put a sheltered by ghosts on three dog you swing and then sack the enchantment you get to make multiple copies of it on all your other attacking creatures and then you can just proceed to nuke as many non-land permits as you have attackers and they get all bigger and they gain lifelink and they become harder to kill just sounds like a great time to me moving away from these auras let's take a look at a couple more great removal spells starting with unwanted remake for a white it's an instant destroy target creature it controls or manifest dread. Cheap one mana white removal spells have existed since the start of the game, and Unwanted Remake is the latest iteration of that kind of spell. Similar to how I said I play Pongify in Standard now, I play this. Yes, I could flip over some nasty card from the top of their deck. But what do I want to deal with right now? The shielder that's punishing my draws and healing my opponent or a random 2-2 that might not even be anything more than a land that got flipped off the top of their deck? Yeah, I'll take my chances with the Faceless 2-2. Two, two. That's how I feel about this spell in all formats. Whatever I'm going to be destroying, it's more likely to be much worse than whatever I just flipped over off their deck onto the board. And the option to you know blow up your own creatures to keep your threats rolling exists as well. Maybe your opponent's trying to destroy your own creature with a bunch of removal spells. In response, you blow up your own creature that was going to die anyways, and you get a 2-2 two, two out of that. It's possibly even upgrading it to something worse for your opponent that you can flip over by paying its mana cost. Anyway, you slice it, the remake may have been unwanted, but it is still a really good card. Moving on to a different color, we have some black spells that should see play in your decks as well. Next up is Nowhere to Run for one and a black enchantment 
with flash that says when it enters, target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. And creatures your opponent's control can be targeted as though they did not have hex proof and their ward abilities do not trigger. Even if the minus three, minus three can't take out a creature, the nowhere to run ability is likely to be good to cast simply because it allows you to overcome the hexproof and ward on your opponent's creatures so that other spells and abilities can target their things. I'm still experimenting with this card, but I really like it so far. A card I'm not experimenting with, however, and have nearly auto slotted into all my mono black, black red, and black blue decks is Withering Torment. For two and a black, it's an instant destroy target creature or enchantment you lose to life. In decks that don't have access to enchantment removal usually we now have another option with withering torment for one more mana than a feed the swarm we've upgraded to instant speed and for the most part it just feels like a much better life loss ratio since it's a set to life instead of equal to the mana value like the feed has so i'll likely still run both spells but withering torment is just so much better now, I have one more removal spell for this list that I absolutely love, and that is Monstrous Emergence. For one in a green, it's a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast a spell, choose a creature you control or reveal a creature from your hand. Monstrous Emergence deals damage equal to the power of the chosen creature or the card that you reveal to target creature. Now, you might say, why is this so special? It's just another two mana bite spell in green. But it is so much more than that. It is a flexible two mana bite spell. That flexibility is what you can use to get the damage off to destroy something that's bothering you. If you know that someone is sitting on targeted removal, that greatly weakens most bite or fight spells since they have all they got to do is kill the creature and that spell is nullified in the middle of the cast. With the monster submergence, you can sandbag a creature, use it to blast away an opposing creature, and then proceed to either cast the creature you revealed or whatever else you want. It also makes it so you can punch above your weight before you normally could. And what I mean by that is that sometimes you really can't use a bite spell to kill something because their creature is just bigger than what you have on the board, and you don't have enough mana to get something bigger on the board just yet to use with that fight or bite spell. But with the monster submergence, you can actually use the creature that's stuck in your hand and use it to smash down that creature that an opponent has that they might have thought was safe from your bite and fight spells. Now, getting away from the removal spells, let's look at some creatures, starting with Irreverent Gremlin. For one, in a red, it's a 2-2 Gremlin with Menace, and whenever a creature power two or less enters, you may discard a card. If you do draw a card, do this only once each turn. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. It doesn't seem all that impressive, but in the right deck, this thing can actually churn through cards. It seems so innocuous, and no one's really going to want to spend a removal spell on a 2-2 two, two that doesn't seem to do much to them. So if you're playing a deck that can generate 1 or 2 power tokens consistently, even off turn, you can cycle extra cards off the Gremlin. I love this thing in my Arabella deck, and it's great in a Goblin build as well. I haven't tried it yet, but I want to try it with some kind of low mana resurrection spells to bring back creatures that we pick off the gremlin to max out value next up is it going to be a creature that's not a gremlin but it makes them for us in the right deck build and that's gremlin tamer for white and a blue it's a 2-2 creature human scout with eerie that says whenever an enchantment you control enters or when you fully unlock a door create a 1-1 gremlin creature token the tamer here is almost a staple of any kind of blue white enchantress deck that you may want to try in standard those decks play a wide variety of enchantments, including some that have flash. So you can even use this to surprise block something. Also, you can ideally just simply flood the board and try to overrun your opponents as well. I'm experimenting with a red, white, and blue variation of this in best of three standard right now to see if I can do this combined with something like War Leader's Call and the uh, Irreverent Gremlin that I was showing you in the last one to see if that list is feasible. Now, included in that deck is a card that is one of the reasons why we have red besides the War Leader's Call, and that is Midnight Mayhem. Two red, white, and a sorcery. Create three red gremlin creature tokens. Gremlins you control gain menace, lifelink, and haste until end of turn. Now, remember the card Heroic. In now, remember the card Heroic Reinforcements? Yeah, this is not that card, but it's close. Instead of getting a plus one, plus one power boost, we get an additional token, and those tokens get menace and lifelink on top of the haste. It's a lot more restricted, but in the right build, it can push a lot of damage. And in the deck I mentioned, I have dealt three damage off of a War Leader's Call, swung with a bunch of two twos with menace and lifelink, and the opponent just lost the game on the spot. I love these kind of 
of swingy cards that can bring you back from the brink of defeat for the win. And those are my favorite cards that are not rares or mythics from Duskborn. What'd you guys think? Did I miss anything that you thought should be mentioned? What are your favorite cards? Let us know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.